we want to be able to select the state, the start month, the end month, and have our formula look up the correct numbers and add. Well, we get to use the XLOOKUP function, and we get to see how to look up a cell reference. What I mean by looking up a cell reference is it's easy to look up the state within here, but return array, we need to highlight this range based on March to July, which means the value March needs to look up the cell reference C6, and July has to look up G10. But when the user changes to April to May, then we need to look up that range where April determines D6 and May determines E10. We'll begin with the XLOOKUP function. And the lookup value is going to be March, comma, the lookup array, the column headers with month, comma, and return array is the first row in the interior part of our lookup table with the numbers. Now, right now, all it's going to do is get a position from March and look up the actual number, close parentheses. And so that's what it did. It looked up the content of the cell. But F2, as soon as we use the colon operator, now XLOOKUP will know to look up cell reference C6. Now we do our second lookup. This time we look up the end month, comma, within this range here. And for return array, we pick the last row of the interior part of the lookup table. We don't need any of the other arguments since match mode exact match is the default, so we can close parentheses. Now, what is this going to do right now? It's going to deliver everything from C6 down to G10. And it will spill because we're using Microsoft 365 Excel. If I change this to April and this to May. Boom, there's the correct return array. The magic of the colon operator, we normally think of it as sitting between two cell references, but you can use lookup functions, and that colon says, hey, lookup functions, you got to look up cell references. Now the rest of the formula, we look up whatever the state is. That's the lookup value, comma, within the range of state. That's the row headers for this interior part of our two-way lookup table, comma. And because return array has columns and rows, when, in this case, Nevada picks out that position, of course, April to May, those two values are delivered. So if I come to the end, close parentheses, and there are the two values for April and May for Nevada. Now we simply put it inside of sum because our goal is to add. And now when I change this to May and September, those are the correct values. And there's the total. Bonus formula number one. Inside of that index right there, there's our array, which represents cell E6 colon I10. And instead of with our colon operator using XLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, we had to use index match on both sides. Then we put that dynamic range, in essence, inside of array. And the row number, that's where we look up Nevada. The key is we have to put in row number, and we have to put a 0 or leave it omitted. Because from that range, we have to tell index to get all the columns. And so that's what you do. You put a 0 or leave it omitted. And then you put that inside of sum. All right, here's bonus number two. We want to see how to create that conditional formatting that will automatically highlight the correct numbers. Now, the formula we're going to use for conditional formatting is going to be harder than the formula we had for either one of these. Now, the way conditional formatting works is we highlight the cells, and we somehow have to trigger a true or false in each cell to apply the formatting. So we go up to Home Styles and the dropdown for conditional formatting, New Rules. Now, there's lots of built-in rules, but there isn't a built-in rule for this one. So we're going to eventually have to use the dialog box in this New Rule option here. But before we do that, 
it's better to build the formula in a parallel range off to the side, see if the pattern of trues and falses are working, and then copy the formula, highlight the range, and paste it up in the dialog box. Now, the trick to this is, well, the row part's not going to be so hard because we can just check that row header against that. But when it gets to the months, I can't check May and September because I just get a true here and here. And I need everything in between. So we're going to think of this table as having one to seven columns. And for May to September, I need the columns that are greater than or equal to the third column and less than or equal to the seventh column. So we'll begin our formula by building a column counter. We'll use the columns function. And eventually, the formula is going to be in that cell. So we build an expandable range locking with the dollar sign the C reference, so C6, colon C6. Now, this will count right now, C to C, which is 1. But when we move to the side, there's no dollar sign in front of that C. So it will move to a D and give us a count of 2, and so on. So if I copy it over and down, now we have something internally in the formula that knows the position of the column. So in the top cell, now I say, hey, are you less than or equal to? And we have to use match to look up the position of May. So we click on May for lookup value, comma, lookup array. There's the range there. All match is going to do is say, hey, I found May in the third position. And we need to lock both the lookup array and lookup value. Now, this is just the first part of our logical test. And look at this already off the bat. We're doing this off to the side to see if the pattern of trues and falses are correct. And they're not. So we're already seeing a benefit to this method. It's actually the lower limit. So we have to say, is the column counter greater than or equal to this lower limit? So now we get the correct false. All right, and so those are all trues. It's working. Now we need to repeat this for the upper limit. That means the seventh column. And we run an AND logical test. So we use the AND function. There's the first logical test, comma, Control V. And I'm going to close parentheses and then amend this. This right here, lookup value, we're looking up September, F4 to lock it. And this, in fact, we're seeing if the column counter is less than or equal to the upper limit. So now I enter that, copy it to the side. And we could test this. If I change this to July, just like that, the trues and falses are working. Control Z. Now we just need to isolate the correct row. So we add a third test, comma, is the column header, which is the state name. And we need to lock it with the F4 key one, two, three times. Lock in the column, but not the row. Are you equal to locked in all directions, whatever we put in C12, F4? And that should work. Control Enter. Copy it to the side. Double click and send it down. And sure enough, there's that beautiful pattern of trues and falses that will trigger the conditional formatting. So we highlight the top left cell in edit mode, Control C, very carefully, not like this. If you have that cell highlighted, you would have to copy that formula. But we copied that one. So the active cell has to be the upper left. Now we go conditional formatting, new rule. Use a formula, format values where this formula is true, Control V. And then we can format it however you want. Red fill, font white, click OK, click OK. That is pretty spectacular. Look at that. In essence, we're doing a three-way lookup, Washington. And there's the three values conditionally formatted with that logical formula. There's the old school method for adding. And there's the new school method for adding. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn more about XLOOKUP or conditional formatting, check out these videos.